Hello all, today we're going to be talking about the main tool palette, which is this guy right here in front of me. A uh, couple of things to know about it beforehand. It can be either horizontal or vertical, and you can adjust all of that either here under application options, and then right here in the toolbar, as you can see, I can make it smaller. If I make it small, this is what it looks like. And it's pretty small. And you can also change the orientation of it from vertical I'm sorry, from horizontal to vertical, if you double click in this little gray area right here, you'll note it makes it vertical. I like it vertical. I like keeping it docked so, sort of over here so that I have more feel to work with. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to keep it horizontal. And maybe you would prefer it horizontal up top. It's really just a matter of personal preference. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit larger so that we can see it a little bit easier when we're talking about it. <clears throat> There, that's fairly large. So I want you to note that the main tool palette is broken up into areas. Here's one area right here, and then you notice there's a gap. Here's another area. Here's another area, another area, another one, and another one, and another one. But for, for, the most, for the most part, I think we're safe calling this as broken down into five different areas. This area right here, we have our selection tools. This is going to allow us to select members of the drill that we have written in. And you can select them in multiple different ways. You've got the box selection tool. You've got the lasso selection tool, which allows you to actually move around a little bit. So for example, as you can see, if I had to move around figures, whereas the box is a little bit more limited. You can search for particular members either by symbol or label, by color, by name. Uh, you actually have a selection history um, tool in which you can kind of go back and see the things that you have, see the folks that you have selected before. You've got the, uh, this is probably the, the most important tool, uh, I feel, the pointer selection tool in that I can use it to select any thing that's uh, already happened before. Let me go ahead and close that window. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in another tutorial. And then we have Spotlight Performer Tool, which allows you to spotlight one single performer so you can follow him or her around while you're writing the drill. This is especially useful. It has been especially useful to me in the past when I needed to follow a soloist, like where is that soloist going to be? Is that soloist going to end up somewhere near where I want them to be? And actually worked out really well in the case of someone who had a physical disability and had trouble marching. So I had to make sure to write easier drill for that spot. And I needed to know where that spot was at all times. So I was able to spotlight that drill and make sure that all of the moves were workable for that individual. So this six box grid right here, these are your selection tools. The next grid, these four right here, are the regrouping tools. So you have the knife tool, you have the glue tool, you have the set reference point tool, and you have the adjuster editing tool. By the way, the adjuster editing tool, I feel is the most important tool that I use when I'm writing drill. We'll go in depth with all four of these in a later tutorial, but uh, there's some really good stuff that you can do with all four of these here. Our next group, is the creation or drawing tools. This is where we actually create stuff. So for example, I can use this to create just single spots right there, or I can use the line tool to create a line. Uh, obviously you can use the curve tool to create multiple curves, etc. cetera. Uh, you can use the arc tool to create arcs. Uh, let me go ahead and close the, delete these as we're getting a little too crowded. Uh, you can use, the Bezier curve to have a little bit more fine control over your curve. This one, I'm, I'm honestly not a huge fan of this tool. It's difficult to work. It's actually, it's actually the one area I feel where an old program called DrillQuest was slightly better uh, at this. And I'm not sure why, or maybe I just not used to it anymore, but you can fine tune your curves as much as you want using that tool. We of course have a circle tool in which we can create lots of members in a circle. Delete those guys. And then we have these block drawing tools and filled shape tools. Also, don't forget about the freeform tool, which literally will just allow you to draw whatever you want in freeform. And you can change all sorts of 
options there. Um, and finally, we have the spiral tool and the uh, shape tool, the, the polygon shape tool. So for example, if I select this right here, there are going to be five sides to it. But what if I want seven sides to it? What if I want three sides to it? Obviously, that's a triangle. There are probably different better ways to do that. By the way, the more sides you add, in fact, once you're over 10 sides, it's really starting to look a lot like a circle, right? If you add 20 sides, it's already very much like a circle. And you might as well use the circle tool for those. And then the spiral tool, which does exactly that, a spiral. So the, these are the ones you're going to use to create all of the drill members that you've got on the field. These are the creation and drawing tool. Our next set are the editing and maneuvering tools. And as you can see, they're all grayed out because right now we have nothing selected because we have no spots. However, let me just add one simple spot right there. As soon as I select this, you note these all pop into life. So we've got all sorts of things like the push tool, We've got the morph editing tool, probably one of the most used and abused tools when it comes to transitions. We've got the resize tool. We've got follow the leader. We've got rotate tool, track editing tool, which allows you to actually fine tune the direction and the path that your members are taking. And you've got the fixed interval flow tool, which I'll be honest with you guys, I never use. And so I don't really know much about it. I guess I should teach myself to use it in case it ends up being my new favorite or something. Uh, these tools here are probably, yeah, they're probably a part of the traditional tool set, which I do not have, but it allows you to create traditional uh, drill uh, counter marches, sequential pushes, parade gates, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, these are going to be useful to you. Actually, I wonder whether they'll light up if we go ahead and put in a couple of page tabs. Let's check that out. So if we're on page two. Oh yeah, look, there they are. So I do have access to them as a beta tester. You might not have access to them. But if you are writing drill for a traditional program or if you've ever seen the Texas A&M marching band, that's the sort of drill that they write or that they uh, teach. That's, these are the tools that you would use for that. Um, so I, I, I could call these the editing and maneuvering tools essentially because they are what allow us to move some of our members around from set to set, uh, but they can be used as editing tools as well. And then we have our last set of tools here, which are basically our labeling or information tools. Um, again, they don't light up, not all of them light up unless you select them. This first one is the label tool, which will allow me to do all sorts of things like change the actual symbol, change the color of the symbol. If I want black, I can just go ahead and do that. Uh, it'll allow me to do a whole bunch of stuff like that. We have the text tool, which allows you to create a box and then write text in it. Uh, we've got the props tool, which allows you to control the placement of props. We've got the visuals tool, which is discussed in an earlier tutorial that you can look up. Uh, it's in four parts, and it discusses all the parts of the visual tools that you can see here. And uh, I forgot what this guy is here. What? Let's see if we can get to hover over it. Oh, yeah, the floor cover tool. I don't use that, but it's going to come in very handy for anyone... Uh, designing for a WGI show, whether it's winds or percussion or color guard. And then the arrow tool, which allows us to create arrows, and they can have, uh, have multi-points, they can be curved, and uh, you can do something like that. And you just keep doing stuff like that if you want. This is uh, especially useful if you want to show something like follow the leader. All right, so in a nutshell, that's the main tool palette right there. Each one of those areas is grouped together for a reason. And uh, just know that if for some reason your, yours are not always showing up, uh, it could be that, well, you're on, you're on page one and so there's n no reason for these to light up if, it, if they are dependent on a transition. Uh, or you might need to have a group selected in order to make that happen. Like for example, you can see almost all of these right now are grayed out. I have to actually select the performer in order to get them to light up. So that is your main tool palette and future tutorials are going to be dealing with each one of those areas in a lot more detail. Thank you.